Okay class, today we're in section 1.8, represent functions as graphs. 1.8, represent functions as graphs. Before, you represented functions as rules and tables. Now, you will represent functions as graphs. Key vocabulary, function, domain, and range. You can use a graph to represent a function. Given a table that represents a function, each corresponding pair of input and output values forms an ordered pair of numbers that can be plotted as a point. The x-coordinate is the input, the y-coordinate is the output. Okay, here you have three different ways of representing the same set of ordered pairs. In a table, input, these are your x values, output, these are your y values. So, input 1, output 2, input 2, output 3, input 4, and output 5. Written as an ordered pair, input 1, output 2, input 2, output 3, input 4, output 5. As a graph, input 1, output 2, input 2, output 3, input 4, output 5, and you can see three different ways of representing the same set of ordered pairs. The horizontal axis of the graph is labeled with the input values. In other words, these are your x values. Input is x. The vertical axis is labeled with the output variable. In other words, this is your range or your output. That's your y values. Example 1. Graph a function. Graph the function y is equal to 1 half x with domain 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Solution. Step 1. Make an input-output table. So, you take your x values, also called the domain, and you label them 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Then you're going to take these values one at a time, and you're going to put them in the original function or equation that they gave you and then that's going to help you to determine your y values. After determining all your y values, now you're in position to plot your graph. So here, our first value for x was 0. So now what's 1 half times 0? Zero? 0. What's 1 half times 2? 1. 1 half times 4? 2. 1 half times 6, 3, and then 1 half times 8 is 4. So now we're going to plot those right over here. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is 2, y is 1. When x is 4, y is 2. And when x is 6, y is 3. When x is 8, y is 4. All right, now in algebra, it is imperative that you show your steps and how you determine an answer. When you're taking your EOC, it is graded on the correct answer and on if you know your steps. All right, so to give you an idea of what that should look like, here's my original equation. Y is equal to 1 half times X. So I'm showing that I know how to solve the problem all the way through. So I have Y is equal to 1 half times 0, and since I'm dealing with a fraction, I'm going to write that as 0 over 1. Now, what's 1 times 0? Zero? 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. My next value is 2. So now I have y is equal to 1 half times 2 over 1. Don't forget, there's a 1 up under there. So what's 1 times 2? Two? 2. 2 times 1? Two. 2. 2 divided by 2? 1. Next, 4 y is equal to 1 half times 4 over 1. 1 times 4 is equal to 4. 2 times 1 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Next, y is equal to 1 half times 6. Don't forget, there's a 1 up under there. So 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. y is equal to 1 half times 8 over 1. 1 times 8 is 8. 2 times 1 is 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 
Example 2. Graph a function. SAT scores. The table shows the average score S on the mathematics section of the Scholastic Aptitude Test SAT in the United States from 1997 to 2003 as a function of time t in years since 1997. In the table, 0 corresponds to the year 1997, 1 corresponds to the year 1998, and so on. Graph the function. Year since 1997, t, that's time, 0, average score, 511. When time was 1, average score was 512. When time was 2, 511. 3, 514. 4, 514. 5, 516. And 6, 519. Solution. Step 1. Choose a scale. The scale should allow you to plot all the points on a graph that is a reasonable size. The t values range from 0 to 6, so label the t axis from 0 to 6 in increments of 1. The s values range from 511 to 519, so label the x axis from 510 to 520 in increments of 2. Step 2. Plot the points. So notice in years, it goes 0, 2, 4, and 6. But now pay attention to what's going on here now. So that's 0, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Here, this little funny mark here, that's called a break. Look at your reading. The symbol on the vertical number line represents a break in the axis. Use this symbol when you're trying to save space because the numbers below this aren't needed. So you're going to save some space here. So you pull a little break right there. So instead of going like 0 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 0, 10, 20, 30, or even 0, um, 100, 200, 300, you can just go 0, put a little break, and that allows you to start at 510. All right? And if you notice, they're going to increments of 4. So they're going 510, 514, 518. Okay, and then from there you just simply plot the points. So when x is 0, y is 511. So when x is 0, y is 511. When x is 1, that's 1, y is 512. When x is 2, when x is 2, y is 511. Notice how both of these are in the same spot, when x is 0 and when x is 2. And then you will simply go on from there. Example 3. Write a function rule for a graph. Write a rule for the function represented by the graph. Identify the domain and the range of the function. Solution. Step 1. Make a table for the graph. In other words, take all the points on this graph and put them on a t uh, in a t table in the form of x and y. So write down all the ordered pairs. So here, x is 1, y is 2. So x is 1, y is 2. Here, x is 2, y is 3. So we got 2, 3. And then next we got 3, 4. Next we have 4 and 5. And then next we have 6, excuse me. Next we have 5 and 6. Step 2. Find a relationship between the input and the outputs. Notice from the table that each output value is one more than the corresponding input value. Step 3. Write a function rule that describes the relationship. So here, we can easily see that y is equal to the x value plus 1. y is equal to x plus 1. A rule for the function is y is equal to x plus 1. The domain for the function is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the range is 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, and that concludes today's lesson.